Hello and welcome to Wild Pitch Wednesday, powered by Dig South. I am your host, Stanfield Gray, CEO of Dig South. Feel good out there? Well, all right, let's do this thing. Each Wednesday, Dig South features one promising startup and several of our Dig Nation experts. The startups are selected from companies who will appear at Dig South Tech Summit on July 24th. Find info and updates at digsouthtechsummit.com. For those of you unfamiliar with us, Dig South is a tech media company that specializes in connecting leading global brands to the South's most scalable startups. Visit Dig South, the South's tech hub, at digsouth.com and usual social media channels. Wild Pitch Wednesday will be rebroadcast on Dig South's YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook pages. Following the broadcast, Harriet Parker of the Dig team will send out a recap of today's episode with links, opportunities, and more including a special cloud credit deal from our sponsor, Oracle. Guests are invited to sit in on Wild Pitch Wednesday, ask questions, and connect directly with our Dig Nation membership community. Check out the brilliant benefits at dignation.co. This week, we are running a Dig Nation virtual membership special. Get the pro-level Dig Nation membership at a 60% discount, just $19 a month. Join our super-connected, kick-ass member group of tech executives, entrepreneurs, experts, and founders. Now, let's get on with the show. Today, our esteemed experts on Wild Pitch Wednesday include Nick Mancini of Oracle for Startups, Matt Dunbar, the co-founder and managing director of Venture South, Jack Harvey, CEO of Accelerize and entrepreneur in residence with the SCRA. Today on Wild Pitch Wednesday, we welcome Ryan Heafy with 6AM City. As Ryan likes to say, while our competitors are focused on becoming a modern media content company, 6AM is building a disruptive local publishing technology platform, curating, packaging, and distributing the hyper-local content designed to maximize audience engagement. Now, at this part of the show, we will begin with a video from 6AM City telling the story. Let's see here. Good, Good morning. morning. It's time to wake up. Welcome. We're 6 a.m. We're the fastest growing local fastest media growing company local in the country. Our mission of doing mission of doing positive service and building local communities by conversation. Each morning, we need to be in the red in the inbox and continue the conversation, continue the conversation across social media, delivering the most relevant, the most relevant, relevant news and events happening in their city. In their city. No BS. No BS. Always positive. The past 15 years, over 2 thousand local news and local news stores have closed their doors. Across the country, the local news media is adjusting to adapt to the consumer, to to the consumer of the now generation. Hey, everyone, well, it appears we have a technical glitch there. Hold on one second. We will fix that and replay the video for you. Okay. Um, right back. Good, Good morning. morning. It's time to wake, time to wake up. up. That is. Local, that We're is. 6 a.m. We're the fastest growing local fastest media, growing local media in the country. In the Our mission of doing Our positive mission. service means building local communities driven by conversation. Each morning, we meet our readers in their inbox and continue the conversation across social feeds, delivering the most relevant, need-to-know news and events happening in their city. No BS, always positive. In the past 15 years, over 2,000 local newspapers have closed their doors across the country. The local news behemoths of yesteryear are struggling to adapt to the consumer of the now generation, leaving a major gap in how local communities engage with their cities. Our boots on the ground, hey editors, eat, sleep, and breathe local, because they are local. We believe everyone is a content creator. Yes, even you, which is why we specialize in the aggregation, curation, and narration of content that is created and provided by the communities we serve. Are you ready to join the conversation? Subscribe for free today. Can you hear me now? Yes, we are good to go. Awesome. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ryan Heafy, co-founder and COO of 6AM City. I'd like to invite everyone here today to join us in delivering the future. 
or wake up each day with a product like Morning Brew, the Hustle, or the Skim in your daily uh, inbox, we're a hyper-local version, uh, very similar to those brands, delivering you the most relevant need-to-know local news and events for your cities. We find ourselves in a unique position with a much larger total but addressable market size by remaining politi politically unbiased, avoiding crime and punishment. Our newsletter is delivered as a five-minute read. It's conversational in tone, and we've really figured out how to redefine local media by being experts in how we curate all the local news and events, package that information, and deliver it to you in a consistent manner at six o'clock each morning. We truly are redefining the future of local media. One thing that you've seen a lot specifically with the recent COVID-19 uh, outbreak is that content creation has changed dramatically. Every business, nonprofit, uh, startup, media company, uh, influencer is all creating content independently and looking for distribution partners. 6 a.m. now serves as that distribution partner for several of the local media companies, businesses, and nonprofits, but also is filling in and replacing the void left by uh, the acquisition of Gannett and McClatchy going bankrupt. Thousands of local newspapers have closed and journalists are being laid off every day. We're here to fill that void. Um, what's really been interesting is that we our model now is extremely scalable. We've launched in seven different cities across the Southeast. We're positioned to launch in any new market now in just 60 days. It only requires two full-time employees, costs us less than 200 grand in our first year, and we're cash flow positive within 12 months. We've really redefined the way that we set up media companies to scale, driving significant margins uh, and operational efficiency. Right now, 6AM is currently the fastest growing local content publishing company in the country. We are uh, sitting with the first mover advantage with our seven cities. Our playbook, which is designed uh, actually in a platform called Trainual, highly recommended for any local startup, um, keeps us uh, in, in line maintaining quality and consistency as we scale uh, and allows us to launch so fast in all these different markets that we've even been able to bring on staff during coronavirus. Um, right now, as we get ready to move forward, we're looking at the acquisition and moving into additional cities. Um, 6 a.m. has two different audiences, its readers and its advertisers. T today, we have over 230,000 active subscribers to the newsletter platform, del delivering over five uh, with a much larger social following uh, behind. Additionally, we have our advertisers. We have over 350 uh, active advertisers on the platform who are anxious and eager to connect with our readership. We monetize the platform in several different ways. There's traditional content and display that you see um, in most other media products, but we've also brought in uh, e-commerce listings platform, uh, capitalizing on opportunities to launch deal of the day and celebrations um, and actually obituaries um, during the coronavirus time to create additional monetization. Our listings platform is kind of like an e-commerce book your hotel um, opportunity with no overhead uh, and high margins. Newsletter ad network and are working with partners to lever our excess inventory uh, to monetize that opportunity as well. Um, that's generating about a quarter million dollars a year for us just in the seven markets that we're in today with a lot of upward mobility potential. Um, just last year, we did 1.6 uh, million in revenue. Uh, this year, we have over 2.2 million booked for 2020 already, um, even amidst the COVID 19 uh, outbreak. Um, we're excited to share that we had our highest grossing revenue month uh, this April. Um, we have very strong advertisers. These advertisers are typically on $24,000 to $36,000 a year contracts. They're annual contracts. So it's a little bit uh, the current uh, times. Uh, we're projecting over 100% year over year growth this year. Uh, we may not hit our 3.57 number. Um, we're shifting our projections a little bit, about three to four months to the right, just as we haven't been able to launch markets during this time, but we're pretty excited about uh, the opportunity. Um, right now, uh, what's really excited, so we, we're, we're really excited about our continued revenue growth. Um, things are looking great for this year. Highest performance um, thus far. Lots of new opportunity coming uh, with coronavirus. We have seen significant increase. One of the things when you look at any media company, um, when it says they have 230,000, typically that means they have like a 15% open rate. We've actually increased our daily readership by over 80% compared to last April. That means that instead of having someone open it two to three times a week, they're now opening it four or five times a week. Um, our open rates are up um, right now. Specifically, we're up about three to five percent on top of the 32 percent we typically have. We just went and reached out to our communities to support local 
raising over $40,000 from our readership in just one week. The cool part about that is we picked up over 1,500 reader testimonials uh, to really validate the product. Um, we've also just took uh, number two best digital news startup in the North American Digital Media Award. Uh, the New York Times and Axios and the Skim, the Hustle Morning Brew, et cetera. We're out there um, and taking uh, top awards in our industry. Uh, number four, top workplaces, which is really helping us on recruiting talent. We won a Facebook uh, grant a couple of weeks ago. We just got announced with the Google grant yesterday. Um, a lot of cool, fun, non-dilutive ways that are helping us build the company. And we're, what's really interesting here on this slide is we're actively working with and in due diligence with Axios on a strategic partnership and investment um, in the company in this round. Uh, we also are working with CNN Digital next door um, and a few other media companies on potential partnerships around content and revenue uh, or local media properties. And we've been being recruited to different different cities by economic development entities. Because of our impact uh, on a local level, driving economic impact, uh, we're having different cities and municipalities reach out to recruit us to their cities to pay for us to come um, and launch in their markets, uh, which has been a pretty cool opportunity. Um, right now, uh, 6 a.m. is raising a $1.5 million round. Um, we have about half of this committed, a term sheet already in play. Um, this is going to set us up to expand to five additional markets. Um, which we are already identifying right now. We're working and putting a significant focus on incremental increase in our uh, revenue growth um, and also looking at new revenue opportunities. So our team uh, is highly focused in that area, adding to our growth marketing and sales teams, um, and then putting a little bit of additional effort into our e-commerce platform. It's a very self-serving platform um, with high margins and potential. Um, and building a, some additional IP in that space will really allow us to uh, be a leader. Additionally, a lot of our readers are looking for uh, where all the events are going on in their markets. Um, we have all that information hidden behind a, a Google Doc somewhere. We want to make sure that we take that information and put it out uh, word facing to the market. So we're pretty excited about the opportunity here. Uh, we'd love to have finding the future of local media. And uh, with that, I'd love to take questions from our panel. On deck first. I guess I'll go first. Uh, sorry, I had to turn off mute. So great presentation. Um, that was very well thought out and well uh, well designed. So kudos to you on that. Um, my biggest thing uh, for something like this is what's stopping a copycat? Um, what's proprietary about what you've built um, that can't be replicated in the Northeast region, Southwest, uh, and, and so forth, um, you know, so easily like you've already done? Right now, um, we're, we're really excited about the process that we've put into place. Um, when we started 6AM, so I'm a mechanical engineer by degree. I came out of the aerospace industry. We really uh, took a lot of those lessons in lean manufacturing and applied them to our business. So we built a playbook for our company uh, really since day one. If you printed it out, it's like four inches thick. It's defining all the processes from onboarding staff to maintaining the tone and voice of the product which insert, ensures quality and consistency. Questions that we use. So where a lot of different uh, people in the media space and other technology companies are putting a ton of time, effort, and money into building the code that's going to give them some IP for something that people might hopefully buy, we've focused first on the business side of things, ensuring that we could monetize the business, create an operational efficiency by focusing on the integrations of existing technologies, working with entities like Oracle, for example. You don't need to reinvent the wheel every time. You just have to have the right set of tools put together. So we've really done a great job at perfecting that um, in meeting with uh, the founders of Axios and top executives. That they're, none of them want to be the operators. They don't want to come in and do this. They know how hard it is. Um, we've really set up something that's uh, defensible in that not a lot of people can do it in a timely manner. It would take them two to three years just to catch up to where we are. Um, so we're really positioned with that first mover advantage um, and the opportunity to increase um, IP integration. Great. Thank you. Okay, next question from Jack or Matt. Hey, can you hear me? 
Yes. Awesome. So, man, excellent presentation. Uh, really like how you've been able to kind of uh, illuminate what what um, six AM does. Um, where do you see where do you see this going? Uh, twenty four, thirty six months from now, what does success look like for six AM? Right now, we're working a lot on strategic partnerships and finding non-dilutive ways to expand to additional markets. So we're raising some initial capital right now to help get us to about 12 cities um, and achieve a position of profitability as a whole for the company. And then are really working to uh, scale through partnership and acquisition. So um, 12 markets next year, 20 plus markets um, by the end of 2021, 20, or 12 markets this year. 20 markets by the end of 2021, um, and then really starting to look at some of the bigger strategic relationships with some of these bigger brands that can help us get to additional markets faster. Um, as we go to scale right now, we're looking at other as acquisition plays for us to come in and pick up audience faster, drive revenue quicker, um, and we start to hit profitability faster. So where we've historically grown by selecting a market and going in independently, um, we're now looking at strategic ways to go into these new markets and really putting a big focus actually on the economic development side. Uh, Lakeland, Florida paid us a significant amount of money to come down and launch in their market um, from from the Economic Development Council. Um, we are now being sought out by several of those entities to come to their to different markets. And that is a big growth opportunity for us. And if you think in kind of your mind's eye for a moment, um, the, the time the timeline of uh, COVID-19 and how uh, you know your audience was engaging with this AM pre COVID nineteen, and then now during COVID nineteen, uh, what, what does it look like going forward? So kind of like pre, during, and post. Any changes? Are we seeing kind of a, a continual, uh, uninterrupted pattern, or are there new new discoveries that you're making? The most interesting thing that's happened with COVID nineteen. Um, I think is that people are home and bored uh, and looking for something to do. So our readership is significantly up. Our open rates are significantly up. The best rate of uh, our best acquisition model is word of mouth marketing, where people forward the email to others. So with more reading, we're naturally building our subscriber base uh, faster, which has been pretty uh, awesome opportunity for us. We're excited about uh, where that's going. Uh, we have pivoted. Um, to the work from home model and we've pivoted to uh, adjust the content a little bit. There's a lot less events and things happening in the market. Um, and we've tried, we've been able to try and test different uh, content engagement tactics, uh, levering IGTV and some other fun stuff. And it's just stories and different that are adding value to the business. It's a low risk time to try some of those things. But there are things that we can do in the future that actually continue to create habitual behavior for our readers. It's also really allowed us to uh, capitalize on some new revenue opportunities. We launched a deal of the day platform that we were able to deploy uh, very seamlessly to our markets um, that allows all local businesses to help promote deals for their, their local businesses. Um, and by doing that, we were able to support local businesses, but show something that we're now able to monetize. Um, and we're starting to scale it up and actually it is generating revenue now, um, but initially really to the markets at the same time. So there's been some cool opportunities there and some new packages that we've created on a sales opportunity uh, where we're closing a lot more uh, smaller deals faster in addition to the long-term contracts that we have. So we're seeing a significant boost in, in short-term revenue. Going forward, we'll likely keep some of the sales opportunities and deploy some of those engagement tactics uh, to help elevate the content. Well, with the IDC reporting late last year that uh, $7.4 trillion would be uh, in, in invested into uh, digital transformation and things like virtual and, and on-demand and empowering a mobile workforce, uh, it sounds like 6 a.m. is well positioned to capture uh, the new economy and those, those new behaviors. Yeah, one of the things that we're seeing right now is a significant uptick in uh, inquiry about advertising potential. Uh, many people, especially on a local level, um, you can kind of get in a groove and it means advertising in the local newspaper because that's what you did for the past 20 years. Um, that, that becomes habitual. Now, that's not an option. 
Um, so they're looking for new outlets. People are looking for new ways to distribute content. Um, everyone is pivoting this way. Uh, the unique thing about where we stand is we're able to pick up those. We already have built audiences, um, established loyal readership. We know how to deploy the model quickly. Um, we are a distribution partner for a lot of things locally. So as we sit here and capture a lot of it, we've also positioned ourselves to be able to innovate into AI, SMS-based distribution, um, and technology um, by making sure that we position content tag, all that fun stuff um, with our content today so that the evolution is seamless uh, to the next step. And and email, by the way, is um, considered one of the most loyal uh, platforms for for messaging. So if you're if a consumer is choosing to actually open up your email, odds are they're going to take a lot of value in what you have to say um, by just the nature of them opening it and choosing to have it in their inbox. So our ability to connect with brands with our consumers is extremely high. And it's we're seeing a lot of interesting opportunities with uh, DTC clients now, uh, the direct-to-consumer brands. So um, some interesting opportunity there to scale revenue as well. Hey, Ryan, this is Matt. Thanks for your presentation this morning. Good job. Uh, I've got a two-part question for you. Uh, the first is, as you think about entering new markets, how do you prioritize among them? You mentioned partnerships, but beyond that, are there uh, key metrics that you're looking for in order to prioritize which markets you'll in enter? And then beyond that, what are the aggregate um, metrics or inflection points that you think would lead to an exit for the company and who, who would likely be the buyer? Sure. Um I'm going to answer this in reverse order, I think. Um, for us, any market that has 50,000 or more people in our total addressable market is really an ideal market for us where we know that we can get to strong readership. We can monetize that readership effectively. We can hit a million dollars in revenue in that market. Um, and we're really in a good uh, position to have a strong, profitable business model uh, per city. Um, for us, when we look at uh, going towards exit and really hitting a higher valuation, Getting to those 20 or more markets um, is really key to us. Um, hitting a million or more subscribers, again, is key. Um, it really starts to change uh, where we can generate revenue, um, our ability to tap into some of the larger marketing dollars and really take and position the company uh, to scale at a strong 10x multiple from where we are right now. Um, as it relates to uh, who we might sell to, there's a couple different opportunities there. Um, one is our own advertising partners. So think of a Berkshire Hathaway, a Realtor.com, um, Nextdoor app. Um, anyone who's in these uh, markets where they're trying to really reach the local community effect. Uh, look at every like realtor, for example, out there right now is creating a ton of content. They need a delivery vehicle that is effective in different cities. So that's an opportunity. Um, the other two opportunities are legacy uh, media models and some of the innovative new media models. So um, whether that, you know, you look at um, Axios a few years down the road or Alara Hippo, who's kind of more on the innovative front uh, end of opportunity, or you go back to the McClatchy Gannett uh, models and those who are trying to really buy the innovation to save their business, um, there's opportunity there as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really interesting to kind of see the opportunities um, and the other question that you had, um, well, actually before that, the best example probably is uh, Barstool Sports getting acquired by a casino and and looking at the way content distribution with different audience, probably a really good way to look at and think about the potential significant valuation and opportunity for a large scale exit um, with a unique partner. Uh, on the picking market side of things, uh, historically, we had picked markets because they were geographically convenient um, or we wanted to go there because we thought that it had some other value or we met somebody or something or an investor came to the table. Today, the place for us is measuring inflows and outflows of people to a market. Um, it's measuring charitable giving per capita, uh, new building permitting, restaurant openings. And then overlaying, among other things, and overlaying our demographics against the demographics in that market 
to determine if the total addressable market size is really going to be a good fit um, for the business to succeed. Um, we advertising revenue. So depending on the size of the city, um, we learned in markets that are smaller, like in Asheville, there's not as bigger, big of ad spend as you might find in a Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, so markets like Raleigh are a lot, a little bit larger markets are a lot more appealing to us. Uh, we also focus on offset. Um, that's the economic development uh, impact of someone recruiting us to a, a market. And then another big piece is talent and then acquisition. And sometimes those come together. So um, finding some smaller uh, media companies or major influencers locally that have established a strong brand, but it's really not their cup of tea or core focus, um, where we can come in at low cost uh, acquisition, pick up a built-in audience and rock and roll and monetize that immediately. Um, one of the things with our ad network um, and working with a company called Media Mobilize, we're able to monetize an audience on day one. So if we come in and acquire an audience, we can immediately be monetizing it. Be there, um, and we're really excited about growing through several of those different channels. Um, so the biggest kind of thought that's sitting in my head, and I'm glad you brought up Barstool because it adds a little bit of fuel to the fire that I that I want to build here. Um, Barstool was able to attack the the gambling industry because of the type of audience that they they were going after: sports junkies, millennials. Um, obviously taking full use of that, uh, the big mobile gaming and kind of FanDuel DraftKings era. Uh, Morning Brew, which was definitely one of your direct competitors, is, is very generalistic. You know, tech, uh, general news, they, they're able to do or have low overhead, um, build a proprietary engine uh, to run everything on, on the for the underlying tech and spread it out far and wide, eventually global. What you've got to do is go from market, small market to small market, stick two people in there, and then make money after a full year. So now I'm thinking you're doubling your market. Your margins, are, your margins may stay the same, but the difficulty in expanding is exponential due to the amount of people that you have to have in each market to serve. Whereas a large general newsletter can just stick a few people that can cover a large region and impact a, a very large amount of people. So I don't doubt that you're, 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 the amount of people you can serve uh, is there, but the, the fact that you have to go from city to city, spin up, spin up, spin up, spin up each time um, makes it supremely difficult to scale far and wide. So what are you doing? And, and, and I guess to, to add on to the question, you also want to build an e-commerce platform and do a bunch of other things. So what are you doing to, to plan all of this out and make sure that you're able to manage that many people and customers and client and ad clients at the same time year over year? Because it's going to balloon uh, like crazy, whereas your competitors haven't had those same issues. Sure. Uh, one of the things that our competitors um, don't have the access to now there is a little bit more cost in deploying our staffing resources into each of these different cities. Um, not, not a lot of people are tackling local and regional revenue and that spend. And as everything else dries up, there's a massive opportunity to capture that local and regional revenue, which none of those national platforms are going after. They haven't set up a, a way to segment things out and, and monetize local markets. They're, they're truly just going after large national dollars. And the price point doesn't work for local and regional businesses. So we have a kind of a unique carve out in the space. Um, while we do understand that it is more expensive to uh, under these, we've been building a lot of operational efficiency behind the scenes um, where the amount of staff that we require to operate um, is only two compared to a traditional media company that may have had 20. Um, so we've changed the model um, in a significant way. And then, um, as we, as we are developing tech to support our platform, we've created custom, uh, analytics dashboards. We've created long-term contract agreements. So we're not in that sales cycle all the time. We don't need a huge team. Um, for example, we have 350 advertising clients, um, active, uh, not including the e-commerce platform. These are con have uh, two client service reps, two branded content folks, and four salespeople that service all the, that business. Um, and they can double their capacity with this team that they have right now. So the it's really not a lot given the amount of revenue that it's generating. 
The uh, other thing that we're doing with the tech side um, is really creating operational efficiency around the flow for all of our advertising relationships, um, where in time we foresee a SaaS based model um, for purchasing content on a low, purchasing all the level um, that we can then give away to smaller markets um, and take it as a data play and a percentage revenue on everything that they sell. So we can help stand up and instantly be in cities across the country in the smaller markets where we wouldn't want an operated model um, and actually make monetize all the other businesses. But for us, we're building for ourselves first and the technology is in house perfecting uh, the business and then setting up ourselves to be able to deploy a new tech platform um, in the future for local. Uh, but no one's playing in the local space and none of the models are designed to support local markets. So we're stepping in and filling that void. And I agree with you, but I mean, the end game here is, you, you know, you're going to be a digital newspaper in every local market at the end of the day. You know, you, you start as a newsletter, but con you got to you got to continue to build content. You got to continue to build ad space. You got to continue to be able to pay your employees. Um, so I think a big acquisition point for you would be kind of like an Axios or CNN where a big media conglomerate gobbles you up and, and kind of sticks you in these local markets to, to serve a diff uh, different style um, you know, content generation. Um, but I think, you know, this big if of this tech platform coming in the future and you want to raise money to, to expand, but you also want to build this platform, I think you need to be a little bit more focused with your approach, especially during COVID. Um, your April numbers are high because of COVID. Um, will they be that high again in a year? You don't know. Um, and if you're raising money for one specific purpose and you're expanding like crazy, uh, building, sticking two people per market, you also want to build a tech platform that's expensive. It's got a lot of overhead um, and it requires a different style of expertise than you've had to commit before. So um, as you go forward, be very mindful of where you're putting your time and energy because they may be better served elsewhere. Um, if you're not entirely sure of what that quote unquote tech platform may be due and the purpose it serves to your scalability um, without having an MVP, an alpha or a usable piece of software in front of you. So I'll leave it at that. Cool. Different feedback. I think one of the things for us is any tech that we're building is directly related to delivering an ROI for the business. Um, so if we're the things that we're focused on right now are direct, directly related to our e-com platform and our events side of the business, not that we host events, but events through our listings platform. Um, and the direct build is is, autumn, is feeding us. So right now our e-commerce platform is already generating about 15 grand a month. We're not spending more than that um, going back into the build side. So um, we're just focused on more of the integration and the opportunity and those pieces around the revenue um, in the long term opportunity elsewhere. But for us, it's more about uh, making sure that we um, understand the opportunity to better position our content, to better monetize the platform. I mean, they're all self-serving things. We're not trying to spend a ton of money um, in developing a massive tech platform. We are better operators um, and better at monetizing and then working with, like, as you suggested, some of these bigger platforms that could expand um, our rate of growth into other markets. Nick raised some some good points and key questions. From your point of view, what do you see as the biggest risk to the company? Now, there's some uh, larger challenges with uh, bigger media companies around copyright infringement um, and some other conversations on a on an international level about copyright. Um, the thing that would keep that keeps us up at night is if some one of those big policies changed. Um, it would hurt not our, just our business, but as any businesses are sharing uh, content on a, on a local level or smaller scale level, um, the ability to aggregate content um, could change. Uh, our, the writing on the wall says this is not going to happen at any time, um, but it would be something that would be a, a concern and that we're watching uh, and making sure that we're positioned to. And the other thing that we have is talent. I mean, our staff are incredible resources. They are the part of the brand that really makes this successful on a local level. Um, their ability to connect and be part of the local community um, makes us not an RSS feed. You know, it makes it personalizes the brand. It really gives um, it, a strong relationship with the markets that we serve. So um, when we have staff turnover, that's always a challenge. Um, one of the most interesting things lately is 
there's a lot of available talent um, in the market. Um, and with the growth of the business and a lot of recent press, we've been able to kind of build um, a really strong excited about the future. Looks like we have time for one more question from our panelists. Who would like to serve one up? Jack, Nick, Matt, are we good for today? Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Ryan, for joining us on Wild Pitch Wednesday. So big thanks to Ryan Heafy of 6 a.m. City and our STEAM experts for joining us on Wild Pitch Wednesday. Wild Pitch Wednesday will be rebroadcast on Dick South's YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook pages. Following the broadcast, Harriet Parker of the Dick team will email a recap of today's episode with links, opportunities, and more. Harriet, you want to share with us, a, share with our audience today, a special offer from Oracle. I think you need to unmute your microphone there, Harriet. Okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah, um, I'd love to. Uh, sorry. <laughs> yes, I'd love to. Thank you, Stan. And thank you, Ryan and 6 a.m. City and all that joined us today. That was amazing. Um, yes, before we end today, we'd like to give a big shout out to our partner, Oracle, whose mission is to help startups grow and flourish. We are huge fans and have heard nothing but success stories from the startups that have worked with them. So if you're a member of Dig Nation, a startup of any size, in a B2B or B2C tech space looking for mentorship, access to global customers, migration, and tech support, this is the opportune time because Oracle is, for startups is providing $2,000 of free cloud credits to the Dig Nation members. So go for it. Sign up um, and get in touch with them. And especially Nick, who's on this call today. I'm super excited to follow up. Thanks, Eric. And to support you and your business, don't forget, Dig South is offering the pro-level Dig Nation membership at a 60% discount, just $19 a month. Join our super connected, kick-ass member group of tech executives, entrepreneurs, experts, and founders. Find details at dignation.co. Get ready for the rebound, people. This is Stanfield Gray of Dig South and your host of Wild Pitch Wednesday, signing off. Thanks for joining us.